Hello and welcome to Munson Made This. My name is Michael, I cook vegan food. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click the subscribe button below and go ahead and give this video a thumbs up while you are down there. I have been obsessed with beans lately. I've been cooking a ton of them in my Instant Pot and I posted in my last video or mentioned in my last video that I was interested in doing a month of beans and everybody overwhelmingly said they wanted a month of beans. So here we go, we have another bean recipe for you. This is a really simple, easy recipe. I'm gonna show you the specific ingredients that I use, but you could easily swap them out for what you have at home. I'm gonna be making what I'm just kind of calling beans and tomatoes. It's just a really jammy, concentrated, delicious, bean and tomato mixture that you can use to serve over toasted bread as sort of like a bruschetta, or you could use it as a pasta sauce, and I will show you both of those today. So what I'm gonna be using are these beans here, which uh, this is about three cups of navy beans. You could use cannellini beans, whatever white beans you like. Um, I cook these in the Instant Pot, and I will talk to you about how I do that in just a moment. The tomatoes, I'm using some San Marzano tomatoes. I think with this dish, because we're using so few ingredients that you really do wanna get a good quality tomato. San Marzano's are really sweet and rich. And uh, if you have them, then please use them. Again, if you don't, if they're not accessible to you right now, uh, then just use whatever kind of whole peel tomatoes you have on hand. Uh, for the pasta, it is important that you use, uh, I'm using orecchette here, which I guess means little ears. Um, but you can see they're kind of like little cups and you wanna find a pasta similar to this or maybe some small shells because you don't want something that's like a long noodle with the beans because the beans are gonna kinda of fall to the bottom. You'll just be eating noodles without the beans. So you want something like these that are gonna kinda of scoop up the beans as you're eating the pasta with it. Uh, lastly, basil. I have fresh basil here. If you don't have access to this right now, um, I guess you could use dry basil, but we're gonna be using this in the sauce itself and actually sprinkling it on top at the end. And then I have some sourdough bread. Um, if you're gonna do the sort of toast version, um, I recommend a good sourdough bread. You could make your own no need bread. If you Google no need bread, it's a really easy way to make homemade kind of a sourdough bread or just use whatever bread you have on hand. So I'm gonna clear some of this stuff off and then I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how I cooked my beans in this Instant Pot. Lately, I've been really enjoying using my Instant Pot on the slow cook setting. Now, each Instant Pot has a different way of setting things, but mine, you just hit the slow cook, and then there's a less normal or more adjustment, and I like to use less, which allows you to cook it as if it were a crock pot on low. You can adjust the time up and down. For beans like what I cooked here, these white beans, uh, they cook in about two and a half to three hours, so I'll just set it for three hours. I'll start checking it about the two and a half hour mark, and uh, whenever they're done, they're done. You want them more, I, it's ready to go. Uh, but it's better to have beans that are maybe on the more done side than underdone. You definitely don't want to undercook your beans. So chickpeas or garbazzo beans, I say that it's about five and a half to six hours doing the slow cook. But the nice thing about this is the beans never reach a boil. So they really do stay intact. They stay nice and uh, they just cook through. It takes a little bit longer than if you see my video for my Instant Pot beans where I do it on the pressure setting. Um, it takes a little bit longer, but I actually kind of like the product here a little bit better. Uh, one trick also that I do is I add a piece of kombu, which is a uh, seaweed, and that's supposed to help with some gas and it's all supposed to help uh, the beans cook a little bit better as well. So those are my tricks. That's how I cook these. So let's head on over to the stove and make this tomato bean sauce mixture. So I'm starting out my pan here on medium heat and I'm going to add a bit of olive oil and it's up to you how much you want to add. Uh, I think a really good quality olive oil is nice for this dish. We're gonna be finishing off uh, this dish with the olive oil, but uh, this part is not necessarily, you don't have to use oil for this part, but I think it does add a bit, but of ri uh, a bit of richness to the dish. Uh, I'm also starting with some miso, which seems kind of strange, but I'm not gonna be adding any vegan cheeses or any vegan parm or anything to this dish. And this miso just adds a really nice depth of flavor, a saltiness, 
Uh, a bit of a uh, fermented flavor, which I would say is similar to uh, what you would get from a Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna just lightly toast this. Uh, when you find this recipe on MunsonMadeThis.com, you'll also see that it calls for tomato paste. Uh, the recipe calls for tomato paste. I just don't have any today. I went to the store to buy some. The store was crazy. And uh, so I just opted out of it. So if you don't have tomato paste on hand, you don't have to use it. But if you do, uh, it does also make this dish a little bit richer. So I'm just gonna stir the miso around here, toast it slightly. I also have some red pepper flake that I'm gonna be adding in there, and that is to taste. So I'm just gonna move this around for a couple minutes. When it starts to smell good, kind of toasty, um, I'm gonna start to add the tomatoes, and I have some sliced garlic. Um, if you don't really like large pieces of garlic in your food, you could definitely do a minced garlic, but I want the garlic to kind of stay intact. So I've opted to slice it into thin slices and that way it'll just be more prominent in the final dish. The miso is nice and toasty, smells incredible. And I'm going to gently, it is going to spit, pour in these whole tomatoes. This particular brand here does have a uh, single basil leaf in it. And you can see the San Marzano tomatoes are a plum shaped tomato. Uh, so I will remove the basil leaf that does come with this. It just kind of looks pretty gnarly. But I'm going to leave this on medium heat. I'm going to let this come up to a simmer. I'm going to break apart these tomatoes. And as soon as it kind of comes up to temperature, starts to simmer, then I'm going to add the beans. And uh, I will add the garlic at that time as well. And we'll just start reducing this down. Uh, added just a little bit of water to the can just to rinse any extra out of there. And uh, it looks like my pasta water has come to a boil. I've already salted it, so I'm going to drop the pasta into there now as well. Whoa. And uh, I'm cooking this according to package directions, uh, which is 11 to 13 minutes. So these can just hang out while I attend to the tomato and bean sauce. My tomatoes are breaking down nicely, and the reason I wanted to use whole tomatoes is just so that there is still some texture in the end. Uh, I have my beans here. This is the equivalent of two cans. There's about three cups, and I'm just going to drain the cooking liquid here, and I'm reserving it just in case I overreduce or I need some liquid later. I can use that bean liquid. So I'm just gonna add these three cups of beans once they drain directly into the tomatoes. And you can see the ratio of tomatoes to beans is pretty high, and that's what we want. We want almost like a 50-50. Adding all of this delicious garlic, it's probably about three to four cloves. And then I'm adding some dried oregano as well. So I'm gonna let this go on medium heat for about 15 minutes, stirring it occasionally so nothing burns to the bottom. But the idea here is that the beans are gonna get a little, going to get a little bit more tender, soak up the tomatoes, the tomatoes are gonna reduce, and the way that we'll know that this is done is when I kind of scrape my spoon or spatula across the bottom of the pan, it'll actually like leave a, I don't know what the word is. It'll leave a line down there that won't immediately fill back in with liquid. So it's gonna be a little bit messy, uh, but it's gonna be nice and jammy and thick, which can be reduced a little bit later when we put it on pasta, but it's really nice scooping it on bread. My pasta is done, so I'm gonna pick this up, drain it in the sink. As you can see, my beans and tomatoes here are going crazy, which is exactly what we want. I'll stir those in just a moment. But the pasta can just drain, hang out in the sink until we're ready to plate it up. Things are bubbling away nicely. When I start to pull my spoon back, you can see that it's still flooding back in, so we're not there yet. Uh, but this is the time now when I want to taste it and see how things are, to see if it's salty enough, see if it needs any more seasoning. So let's just give this a taste. For my taste, it needs a little bit of salt, so I'm gonna add that now. We'll taste it again when it is finished. Uh, but that's the first salt that we've added because, again, we use the miso for a flavor base. So I'm going to let this continue to go. This is a good time for me to chop the basil and also get my bread toasting. I'm going to do it just here on this cast iron skillet. And uh, 
everything should be done when the beans are done and ready to go and then we can dig in. So I'm just gonna take a bunch of these leaves off the basil. I'm not really concerned about the size. Um, this is just a really nice freshness that's added to it at the very end. And again, we'll top whatever we make with this as well. So I'm gonna cut quite a bit again for both the interior and exterior. So I'm just gonna kind of roughly ball it up and chop into it. And that's good. This should be enough to go inside and to go on top of both our toast or crostini, whatever we want to call them, bruschetta, and the pasta as well. I have two slices of really nice sourdough bread here, and I'm going to just drizzle them with olive oil. Being fairly generous, this adds a ton of flavor to the bread here, to the toast, and it just helps it to get nice and crispy as well. So flip these over so the oiled side is down and then do the other side. Again, if you're not a fan of oil, don't use it. These beans and tomatoes are pretty much done. Again, as I move my spatula or spoon across the bottom of the pan, it's staying a little bit, still needs a couple more minutes. And it's up to you what temperature you wanna do this on. If you wanna do a little bit lower, it'll take a little bit longer, a little bit higher. Um, but it usually takes me about 15 minutes to get it to the place that I want. But you can see we got a pretty even distribution of beans and tomatoes here. It's really rich, flavorful, tons of garlic. It's gonna be beautiful on pasta or on toast. Let's check the bread and see how that's doing. Okay, well, this pan doesn't seem to be heating evenly, but it's definitely time to turn. That's just more flavor, but it is getting nice and crusty and it smells incredible. These are just about done. We are done. The beans are exactly where I want them. And as you see, when I pull my spoon across, it leaves, well, it's still puddling a little bit, but it's where I want it. Um, it stays in, uh, as Ben pointed out, awake. So I'm gonna turn this off now. It'll still continue to reduce. Uh, and I'm gonna add just a nice bit of basil in there as well. And I wanna do this at the very end. And I'm just gonna stir this in. My bread smells like it's burning, so let's flip that as well while we're here. Oh, it can stay a little bit longer. I'll actually turn that off. So once this is stirred together, we're pretty much ready to plate it up. So. I'm gonna meet you back at the island. I'll show you how I toss it with the pasta, I'll show you how I serve it with the bread, and uh, we'll enjoy. Our beans and tomatoes are done. You can see how beautifully thick it is compared to the large can of tomatoes we had just a few minutes ago. So I'm gonna serve this two ways. First way is I'm going to be filling this bowl with the beans and tomatoes, and this is gonna be for the appetizer version, which we'll serve with the crostini. And then here I have the pasta all cooked and I'm just gonna spoon this on top of here and then we'll toss it together. Both of these will get topped with more basil, a little bit of olive oil and some Malden coarse grain salt. For the pasta, you just wanna toss it together gently with the noodles. If it seems a little bit dry, hopefully you did, unlike I did, you reserved a little bit of the pasta water. Um, but it looks like I'm actually going to add a little bit more of the beans and tomatoes. But you'll be able to see here in just a moment just how those beans start to settle in to the little crevices or the little cups in the pasta. And then I'm just going to pour it into this bowl to serve it up. So I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the top of both of these. This just adds a lot of nice flavor, a bit of fat. I'm gonna add the fresh basil on top of both as well. Adds a nice color, flavor, freshness. A Little bit of coarse salt, just to punch up the flavors a little bit. And then for the appetizer crostini version, we'll just serve it with the toasted bread stuffed into the bowl. And there we have some delicious tomatoey beans, really easy, just a couple ingredients comes together really quick. 
We have an appetizer version, we have an entree pasta version. Both are delicious and you can swap out the ingredients that I use with whatever you have on hand. Now it's time for my favorite part to give this a taste. Personally, my favorite way to eat this is just on some crusty bread. So I'm gonna spoon a nice spoonful on and take a bite. It's so simple, so rich, so hearty. I love the beans, they're nice and creamy. You can use like cannellini, you can use navy. The tomatoes just reduce down so nice, get so rich. I love the olive oil, the fresh basil. It all just comes together in such a delicious meal that's pretty much a can of beans and a can of tomatoes. So you definitely need to give this a try. And again, swap some things out, make some changes, make this your own, give it a go. I appreciate you watching, thank you very much. Thanks to all of you that are supporting me on my Patreon. If you aren't yet watching Months and Ate This, there's a link below to go ahead and follow me on Patreon as well. Um, I haven't actually posted the last Patreon video, so I'll make sure that that's up uh, when the next Months and Ate This video goes up as well. So thank you to all of you that are supporting me on there. Thanks to all the new subscribers for coming to this channel. If you have been on this channel for a while, you may have seen that Ben and I have two puppies, Tuffy and Odie. Um, sadly, this week, a couple days ago, Tuffy passed away. So uh, he wasn't at my feet in this video and he was very much missed. So. Um, we're kind of going through a lot here. That's why our videos have been a little bit late. So um, thank you in advance for all the love and support for that. So thank you for watching again. I will see you next time with a brand new recipe video, another bean video as you all requested. Have a great week.